Surprisingly, two minutes away from where we live, the Wan Buddhist Temple of North Carolina was located. My dad started going weekly, and my mom joined later. This is where my practice truly started. At first, meditation and chanting were difficult and strange to me. I did not want to learn how to meditate better and, and chant more clearly and improve my practice. As time went on, though, I started learning more and more each week. Going to the temple felt less of a challenge and more like of an opportunity. Though I'm nowhere near per perfect with my Dharma practice, I'm further along than when I started, and that's what matters most. Thank you. It's basically saying that learning is very important to life because it's what makes you grow as a person, and that also connects with, I think, the next one, which is about uh, teaching other people and how teaching is important, and I think both of those are connected because to, in, in order to teach someone, you have to have learned what you're going to teach. So if you're reluctant to learn from other people, you'll miss the chance to learn from life and help other people practice teaching as well. I have a, I have a younger brother, um, and as many siblings, older siblings do, I often feel annoyed by him. Most of the time, I'm annoyed by little things that only seem to bother me when my brother does them. Looking back, I know that these are small irritations, but they seem like such huge disturbances in the moment. So how do I let go of these disturbances? I think that I'm going in the right direction by being aware of my thoughts and how they can turn into negative words or actions. Only when I am aware of myself in the moment am I able to catch myself and also ask the question, why is this a disturbance? And with that, I have answered my original question or with another question. Uh, nonetheless, when I ask myself that, it often forces me to reflect and to truly understand that most of my, um, most of the time, that disturbance is in fact uh, just another one of my mind's creations. Thank you. I practice this by thinking of pros and cons to situations when I find them hard to deal with. For example, if I'm taking a hard test tomorrow and I have to skip going out with my friends to study, I can think of the pros and cons of staying home. Some pros are that I will be less stressed when I do the test and that I will get a higher score. A con is that I will miss the opportunity to see my friends, but it isn't as bad because I can see them in other days while I can't repeat the test. Usually, I find that the pros are greater than the cons and I can make my decision with a clearer mind. This leads to the best outcome and I will feel grateful that I thought it through instead of feeling resentful because I didn't think through all my options. It is easy for everyone to not do like anything and let laziness, unbelief, greed, and foolishness take over. However, these characteristics are often harmful and negative to our minds. Sometimes the easy path isn't always the right one. We need to change those characteristics into positive thoughts like belief, zeal, questioning, and dedication. When I was in first grade, I refused to do pretty much everything. I was in Montessori school, which has you learn at your own pace, but my pace was crawling around on all fours pretending to be a saber-toothed tiger. To put it lightly, it was a pathetic sight to behold. Now that I am no older and hopefully wiser, I often think about how much easier things would have been if I had listened and worked hard in those days. I'd probably enjoy learning more and it would be easier to do math. And also, uh, it, it would just be easier to do things in general. And that's it. All human beings are originally free from wrongdoings, but when something happens in our life, we respond. We naturally respond to it. Um, sensory conditions will always be there. However, we have to choose to either respond to these through wrongdoings or acknowledge the sensory condition and move on from it without acting on it and responding in a way that might be harmful. If we look back to our self-nature, we can realize that we can let go of our wrongdoings and come back to our original self. We can separate these wrongdoings from the sensory conditions and make connections between the two. That way we can find the specific reason for our reaction and how we can make changes for the future. So, um, if you choose to follow this practice, then you will always be grateful for everything you have in your life and that you were given one. The feeling is like nothing else. If you choose not to follow this practice, on the other hand, then you will have a constant feeling of resentment towards things you have in your life and will attract more and more resentment into your life with the law of attraction. 
You must have gratitude for even the little things in life, instead of resenting them. Be happy that those things are even there to begin with. Most importantly, do be grateful for the life you were given when you were born and all that is in it. Wow.